10 seconds. Is this where the damn drumming and the music kicks in? No, no, no. It's the ukulele. Aloha, friends. Mahalo for joining me. Tonight is a very special episode of On The Pipe Podcast. I'm your host as always, Tyler Shepardson. And I can't stop playing my ukulele. Alright, <clears throat> let's go get started. What is going on everybody? Welcome to this episode of On The Pipe Podcast. I'm your host as always, Tyler Shepardson, and today is Tuesday, September the 21st, 2021, and that means it is time once again for another episode of On The Pipe Podcast. How many times am I going to say On The Pipe Podcast? That time I meant to say OTP Tuesdays, but I got a million things going on right now. I'm trying to get everything situated. I was playing my ukulele and I was like, oh, I'm going to start the show with an ukulele because that makes all the sense in the world. Um, Yeah, ukuleles are really fun. If you want one, pick it up. But we got other fish to fry. We got an episode coming at you for OTP Tuesdays back in your life. We're staying in your life this time. And you know what, gang? I mean it because I touched on it last week, but I did not get a chance to go in detail on it because... I was sitting at Josh Toth's kitchen table with Big Rig Craig, Craig Oberholzer. We were both sitting there, and I had to do the race recap so you guys knew what was going on, but I I touched on it briefly about the support that I got from the episode two weeks ago, our comeback show, the one that was kind of my explanation as to why I disappeared for three months. I wanted to go on a long rant about it last week, but sitting at their kitchen table, I obviously could not do that, but I do. From the bottom of my heart, want to say thank you all so very much. Everyone that reached out to me, it was actually overwhelming. I was a little bit afraid to talk about the stuff that I talked about in that show, and so that's why I kind of did a soft release is what I would call it. I didn't post anything about it. I just threw it out there into the interwebs to see what would happen. My goal was to kind of get feedback if it was completely out of line and I shouldn't have said it. I figured somewhere in that first couple days somebody would listen to it and tell me that. That did not happen. Instead, I started getting positive things just flooding my inbox. And um, on my on my personal Instagram, on the OTP Instagram, on, I got Facebook messages. And, man, it was overwhelming. And that show actually had more downloads that week than most of the shows that I do. So it, it was crazy to come back to such a warm welcome and a warm response. So... I just want to say thank you everyone so very much for even listening to the show, for ever listening to the show in the past, and for continuing to listen to this show. Uh, it truly is a, a passion project of mine. Um, it's it's hard to squeeze these things in. I mean, I work 10-hour days. I got a lot of stuff going on. A lot of times when I'm going to the races, I'm getting back Monday mornings. I mean, I'm leaving my house at 530 Um a lot of times or six o'clock at the latest to get to work on time and then I work all day and then come home and got to do this and I, I don't know I didn't want to go into all the details about it but like the whole whole money thing like this thing cost me money at the end of the day um and so I, I do it because I love it I do it because I think that these racers and riders deserve a spotlight and I think they deserve more media attention and more coverage and the fact that you are willing to listen to me talk to myself on this podcast and, and spill the news out there and get the race results out there um, it means the world to me and let's hope this train keeps on running and we can really put a dent in this off-road world because that's that's ultimately the the goal is to bring more eyeballs to the sport and I mean, there is no other show that I think consolidates the information of what's going on right now in the races and gives it to you all. And there are a lot of you all that race every single weekend. There's so many different race series in so many different states. And it's insane the amount of turnout that everyone is getting. Um, like uh, last year, I think I mentioned one of my previous shows, but uh, I, I spoke with the AMA as I was going through this whole process of starting the race series. And last year was the first time that off-road race participants superseded motocross race participants. And I don't, 
I don't think I'm mistaking, but if I am mistaking, I apologize. I'm pretty sure that is the first time that that has ever happened with the AMA, that there was more off-road racing participants than there were motocross racing participants. Long story short, this sport is growing. This sport is alive and well. There are people out there racing, and for some reason, there's people out there listening to this show. And so that's the thing is everyone's spending your hard-earned money to get to the races. You're spending your hard-earned money on your bikes, on your bike parts. You're spending your long hours out in your shops, getting your bikes ready, getting everything ready to go to the races. You're driving hours to the race. You're camping. You're spending money on campers. You're spending money on food. You're spending money on entry fees. Everyone is using their time to chase after these races and go after what you love to do. And my only goal here is throughout the week when you're recovering from one race and getting ready for the next race weekend, this is supposed to be an outlet to get the knowledge and maybe get a little bit of a mental vacation from your your day-to-day work life and hear about what happened over the weekend, hear about gossip going on, hear about team changes. So that's why I'm here. That's why I'm back. That's why I love to do this. And that's why I will continue to do this. And that was a long way around to say thank you, everybody. The people that reached out to me meant the absolute world to me. I had some really good friends reach out to me. I had some acquaintances reach out to me. I had some people that I've raced against reach out to me. But I think this particular episode, the one two weeks ago, it had more people that I don't know reach out to me than have ever reached out to me before. And I think that's what really blew my mind throughout this whole thing is it's pretty insane how big of a reach this thing has gotten to this point and I can't believe it I think it's awesome but to hear some of these stories that people have told me and I want to get permission before I start sharing some of these stories but some of these stories like really hit me that something like this can affect somebody the way that it has and I think I never realized that in this whole thing like when I've taken my lapses and I've gotten caught up in work and gotten caught up with COVID and gotten caught up with safety stuff. And I kind of disregarded the show and I don't think anything of it. I'm like, ah, who cares? No one cares. No one's, no one's waiting on Tuesday nights or Wednesday mornings for me to post these things. Like I'll do a show and nobody's even going to notice. And then something like this happens and it blows my mind. The amount of reach that this is, this has had. And like I said, I I do want to get people's permission to share some of the stories that I got. Um, but hopefully that can come later on somewhere down the road, but it's insane. So thank you. That's all I can say. Thank you so much. A lot of those messages really touched me. They really hit home with me and it really put a lot of things in perspective. And this thing, this podcast, it's fun for me. I like to do it. I like to get it out there. And the fact that it's so receptive and like I said, spreading so far now, it means the absolute world to me. And so now going back and some of these messages I've gotten, some of these stories I've gotten and the overwhelming amount of support that I've gotten, that is what is going to be on my mind these Tuesday evenings when I have a long day at work, when I have a lot going on, when I got all sorts of other stressors of life come about me. I'm going to think about some of the stories that I've read over the past two weeks and um, and grind through it and get these shows out here because people listen to it and it that to me makes this whole thing worth it because that means we're growing the industry. We are growing the amount of eyes on this, which grows the amount of sponsor dollars thrown in this, which grows the amount of things that race series can do and that grows the amount that teams can pay riders to go out there and do it and at the end of the day that is what i want these riders are not making anywhere close to the money that they deserve from promoters especially um some people have really good team deals a lot of people aren't making anywhere close to what they deserve so at the end of the day that is the big picture and uh the fact that been able to start a dent with that with on the pipe podcast is pretty cool i think it's really cool and uh, I, I appreciate you listening, and um, I appreciate you being a friend and telling a friend. So if you do listen to the show, and you are one of these people that I'm talking about, and like I said, I can see the downloads from states, countries, where they came from, what you're listening to it on, uh, where you're listening to it at. I mean, I can't see your address or nothing, but I can see the states uh, of what states are listening to it and how they're finding it, whether you're finding it through Apple Podcasts, you're finding it through our website, or all that. And it's pretty cool how detailed these analytics can get. 
But some of the numbers that I see of people that listen to this thing blow my mind. And then, like I said, a lot of people that I've never met before that are reaching out to me saying that they listen to every episode and that they feel for me on everything that happened and to keep my head up and keep going. And I, I think that's what really put it in perspective for me. And I can't thank you guys enough. Um, but yeah, I'm doing one of those rant things. I was told that I need to get better at my rant. So we're going to move past that, but just know I appreciate you last week. Also caught up in the kitchen table awkwardness. I forgot to thank our sponsors. So I want to take a moment real quick just to say thank you to our buddies over at armored graphics. They do everything involving dirt bike graphics. Uh, they can do you any bike. Make sure you're checking them out. They also have shirts, hats, apparel, um, Suzuki parts, all sorts of stuff. Check out Armor Graphics, armorgraphics.com or at Armored Graphics is where you can find them. Don't forget you can use promo code OTP on your next graphic kit and it's going to save you 15% on your graphics. Which, when you're talking about dirt bike graphics, one, you want the best quality that are going to hold up to a bunch of races. My armor graphics, I was racing every single weekend, literally every single weekend, mid-east hair scrambles, GNCCs, fitting in other races and ride days where I could, and my graphics will last me all season. Halfway through the season, they're still looking like I put them on last week. So you got top-notch quality, you got top-notch people, what a crew that is working over there at Armor Graphics. Um, give them a chance, check them out, and not only that, but you're going to have the best looking graphics on the block. They spent years doing the JGR MX graphics, and um, I thought it was cool during that Supercross period. JGR's bikes, if you go back and look at them, or maybe if you noticed them while Supercross was going on, their graphics changed damn near every week. And so instead of running the same kit all year, those graphics were changing every single week, and I thought that was such a cool touch for those factory teams to do because rather than printing out 100 sets at the beginning of the year and just changing them, they would print them out every week and be like, hey, we know you guys are putting new graphics on. We're going to go ahead and make them different. So I thought that was really cool. But yeah, check them out, armorgraphics.com. They got their new site up and rolling. You can see what kits there are, how they would look on your bike. You can change some colors around. And as we mentioned before, there are some OTP kits out there in existence. There's an OTP Yamaha kit. There's an OTP KTM kit. There's an OTP Kawasaki kit. So um, those aren't on their website, but if you ride one of those bikes or you ride another bike, we can get you one made. If an OTP kit is something that would interest you, shoot me a message and uh, we'll try to facilitate it and make it happen. Also want to say thank you to our good friends over at Ikthus CBD. That is I-K-T-H-U-S CBD. Uh, you can find them at ikthuscbd.com. Uh best cbd around a lot of cbd now it, it kind of like it's like craft beer and food trucks it's the in thing right now and that's what everyone wants to get their hand involved in so there's a lot of people that take a lot of shortcuts and take the the short way to it or uh the the lazy or the easy way to it ichthus does it right they have third party testing that proves the results that proves why they are a step above the competition and why they have such a premium grade product they have everything from tinctures to creams to gummies to uh they make a cbd with melatonin in it to help you sleep um which I, i've been wanting to try those but i've tried the other ichthus products and they are second to none it is a very premium cbd product so if you yourself have been interested in cbd and just haven't pulled the trigger um the good news is is if you're listening to this there's a good chance you ride a dirt bike and Ichthus supports the dirt bike community. They have riders in every discipline of the sport. Um, I always kind of fall back on Rachel Archer because Rachel Archer is an Ichthus rider. Uh, so she has her own discount code. And kind of the thing that we worked out with Ichthus CBD is, once again, big picture here. Remember, we just talked about it a few minutes ago. This is about the riders. This isn't about me. This isn't about OTP. This is about getting riders more money getting riders more exposure and both of those things go hand in hand so rather than otp having a discount code all of these riders that ichthu supports they have their own discount code so i'm going to tell you to go look through their rider page and find the rider that you want or want to support and use their discount code because one it's going to save you money two it's going to get you a premium product at a lower price and three it's going to help those riders so Rachel Archer is usually who I fall out on. Um, Steven Nichols, Nichols, Nicholson, Steven Nicholson. He's an off-road rider too. He's got a code. You can check him out. Flying Taco, Carlos Short. Um, if you're from the Charlotte area, then you definitely know him. And you, you might just know him 
if you're not in this area, he's a moto guy. Um, he had a gnarly street bike crash. Then he came back, had a gnarly dirt bike crash. It was like a broken neck, and it was, it was pretty bad. Now he comes back and has another street bike crash and gets all mangled up again. Um, so he has his own code, so no doubt he could use that support right now. Jesse Strawham, um, I actually just got done reading one of her Instagram posts. I did not believe in the word influencer until Jesse Strawham. Jesse Strawham is an influencer. If you don't know her, she is wildly popular on the social medias, and she does the social medias right. She was paralyzed in a street bike accident, so her lower extremities do not work. She's a paraplegic. Um, but following her journey since her accident to now has been absolutely unreal. It's been absolutely inspiring. And that's literally what I was just sitting there thinking when I read her last post from today is she is the definition of an influencer. She represents not only Ikthu CBD really well, but every company that she works with, she represents him so well. She represents I guess you would call it the paraplegic community very well. She represents humans very well. If you're not following Jesse Strawham, go follow Jesse Strawham because she is a very motivational and inspirational person. I've talked to her in the past about getting her on the podcast. We need to do that. She actually used to race GNCCs when UTVs were in GNCC. She had a uh, a Polaris Ace with hand controls on the steering wheel, and she would go out there and race all the GNCCs, which I thought was super rad. But, uh, yeah, we're going to have to get Jesse Strawham on here one of these days. Went on another rant. Sorry, Big Tom. I know you yell at me for that. There it is again. But, uh, yeah, go check her out. She's got a code. Um, Freddie Norin, his title sponsors it through CBD. Uh, Shelby Rowland, she's a CBD ath- or, uh, it through CBD athlete. Alicia Goggles, she is as well. There's a lot of people that are represent, representing Ichthus, which means Ichthus is supporting a lot of riders. So I like to support the riders that support us. Check out Ichthus CBD. Speaking of supporting riders, I do want to start this show out. And I say start it out. We're 17 and a half minutes in, but we're going to call this the start. Ben Parsons. He has been with that Coastal Husqvarna team over the past several years. And now he is with that Coastal um, gas gas team, Ricky Russell's teammate. He was racing 125 or the XC3 class this year. Um, if you have been on social media in the past couple days, then you have seen the I don't know what to say. You have seen the post about Ben Parsons. Um, he had a a very bad cra- practice test that has put him in the ICU. And I think the crash was either Friday or Saturday, and he is still in ICU now. Um, This is one of those things where OTP going forward, I know we've talked about it before, not keeping secrets from you guys anymore. Um, if If I hear stuff and it is substantiated and there is truth behind rumors, whether team rumors or race rumors or anything going on, We're just going to blab that out. Everything is so hush-hush, but that's the point of this podcast is to get the news out there. The one place where I will not do that and I refuse to do that is when it pertains to riders. We are are a rider-first program. Um, So I've I've spoke with some people, but uh, I am not at liberty to relay any information. But from what we have seen on social media, all the stuff that has been posted by, um, I think it's Ben's mom, I think is where the the posts have been coming from. for the first couple of days, they were having a hard time keeping Ben awake. Um, he could he could kind of wake up and know that people were in the room and know that people were talking to him, but couldn't really open his eyes, and then he would doze back out very quickly. But it, it seems like over the past day or two, he has been able to wake up. We've seen some pictures of him giving some, some thumbs up. Um, I think it was Ricky Russell that went and visited him, so... Um, no doubt that is good news to see. Um, I think he went in for surgery today on his neck. Uh, the one thing that I'm hearing is that neck injury, rib injury, back injury, head injury. Um, none of that is good. It is really scary. And this has been one of those things that's kind of hit me really hard because you're hard pressed to find a better person or a better dude than Ben Parsons. Super nice. Always walking around the pit, smiling at everybody. Always walking around talking to everybody. Um, he and Ricky Russell both missed the last race due to COVID. 
Uh, so I posted that on the OTP Instagram and then Ben actually reposted it and then we kind of talked back and forth and he was in good spirits and um, said he wasn't feeling too bad about it. So that when I first saw that post that said, we need your prayers to have Ben wake up, my first thought was, oh no, like, is this COVID related? Um, it's not COVID related. He did have a crash. Um, like I said, I, I really don't want to get into the details because I feel that is not my place, but we have seen those public posts on Instagram about what's going on and kind of keeping us updated. Um, so it, it's good to see him acknowledging people and giving the thumbs up and, um, it looked like today he was able to talk with his brothers and talk with family and everything. So, um, he is up, he's doing better from everything that, that I can tell. Um, yeah. So, uh, just want to give a, a big shout out to Ben Parsons. We're pulling for you. I'm a huge Ben Parsons fan. And um, I hope that you guys can keep him in your thoughts and your prayers or um, whatever means a lot to you. If you just send good positive vibes, if, that, if that's what you want to do, just um, be thinking about Ben and be thinking about his recovery. And we wish him a, um, I don't want to say, I hate when people say speedy recovery. Um not a speedy recovery. I want to wish Ben a full, a full and healthy recovery. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to, to start out with that. Um, also Ben Wright, Ben Wright is a local guy to hear friends with Zach Davidson, been racing with Zach Davidson for a while. And I've seen several people kind of share some stuff going on with Ben Wright. I personally don't know what's going on with Ben Wright, but it, it sounds like another, uh, potentially a crash or an injury situation. Um, I haven't seen any details on that, but I have seen that being shared. So I wanted to, to mention that as well, that, um, whatever Ben Wright has going on, if you keep him in your thoughts and thoughts and prayers and everything going forward as well um yeah so we'll get into this past weekend's race there was a lot of races going on and i am so sorry i cannot keep up with all of them there is a works and s works and t works and ixcrs and y noahs and what's some of the other ones vxcs nchsa there's a, there's a bunch of them i think probably the best regional circuit out there Former AMA Promoter of the Year, the Mideast Hair Scrambles. They are in my backyard down here in the Carolinas area. And I I mean, I'd have to really go through like AWORKS and IXCR. Um, but it seems like Mideast, if you look at the Mideast results on any given weekend and compare that with GNCC results, I, I have to feel like Mideast Hair Scrambles are the best represented in the tops of the leaderboards on the national level. Um, Mideast, it, it's like a little GNCC. Buren Hamrick runs the Mideast series. Buren Hamrick was a trail boss for GNCC for many a years. Um, so it, set, it feels like a little mini GNCC. The tracks, I think, are really good. He runs a lot of bike-only section. Um, so I think it keeps the, the trails fresh. It keeps them good. I love Mideast. I've, I've raced Mideast for the past six seasons. And um, it's my my favorite series to, to race now, and it's probably the series that – oh, it's definitely the series that I've raced the most. So um, if you're ever in the area, check out a, a Mideast Hair Scramble. They're, they're really good races. Um, and it is an AMA event as well. So anyway, uh, they had a race this past weekend. That is really the only one that, that I saw, um, Trevor Bollinger. He's always a local at Mideast. He's won several Mideast championships. You can usually expect to see him out there. Same thing with Jonathan Johnson. He's always out there battling for the wins as well. But the past couple Mideast races, Denver, Australia's finest, Josh Strang, has been out there racing them as well. So Josh did a bunch of suspension testing, and then he went out and raced Mideast this past weekend. Trevor Bollinger led the first lap, and then Josh Strang would take over the lead on that second lap. And then from there on out, throughout the rest of the race, the biggest gap of the day between Josh Strang in first place and Trevor Bollinger in second place was 4.2 seconds, and that was at the finish line. I looked at the lap times. They were coming through the scoring wheel-to-wheel -wheel every time. Sometimes it was a half a second, then it was a second, then it was two seconds, then it was half a second, and then it was 4.2 seconds. So that was a tight battle that pushed all the way down to the wire between Josh Strang and Trevor Bollinger, which no doubt helps both of them. Um, Strang 
couldn't buy luck this season, it seems like. Um, he's had a string of bad luck. And kind of like we talked about before, it's been things that are out of his control in a lot of the situations. So, um, super bum for Strang. Strang was b- by everyone on everyone's books a championship hopeful this year, and um, it, it seems like just some setbacks here and there have kind of taken him out of the running for this year. But he's like I said, still making bike changes, making suspension changes, and and going out there and um, trying to figure this thing out. Last year, we saw him come down to the wire in that championship battle. Ended up second on the year for last year. Comes into this year, as I mentioned, probably one of the the, the three hopefuls, I would say, three to four hopefuls of winning this championship. So um, it has been uh, a bummer that things haven't gone the way that he would like. But when everything's healthy and everything's running right, he's up there at the front. I mean, he's won races last year. He's won races this year. Um, it's just... Like I said, just a, a string of unfortunate events. But him and Bollinger going back and forth, battling wheel to wheel. Bollinger coming off of a knee injury, coming back from that, getting another knee injury, double knee injuries, double knee surgeries. He's kind of had a long road back and had some setbacks this year as well. But they come out there, go wheel to wheel, win by over five minutes over third place. Does this mean that Tebow is back? I think that's what I'm saying right now. Tebow is back. Um... He said that this is the healthiest he's felt. He's feeling good. He's riding good. And he goes out there and shows it at Mid-East. Him and Josh Strang kind of pack up together and leave the rest of the competition. So let's hope that they can carry that momentum into this weekend. And uh, who knows, maybe even them two will tag along together and push each other this coming weekend as well. But no doubt, both of them looking to be on the box. And if you are a betting person, I would bet that uh, that we could see the 114 or the 739 on the podium, maybe even in the middle of the podium this weekend in midst of a championship battle in that XC1 class. But at the Mideast Hair Scramble, it was Josh Strang taking the W, taking the win. Trevor Bollinger, second place. Jonathan Johnson, who is just a couple points out of the Mideast Point Series lead. He gets third place. Lyndon Snodgrass is your fourth place finisher at the Mideast. And then Zach Davidson rounds out the top five. I was looking at the points. Zach Davidson is the Mideast points leader right now. I think about two or three points over Jonathan. So that's a little little local battle, a little, little bragging rights. AMA Pro Championship coming down to the wire. Zach Davidson and Jonathan Johnson. Be interesting to watch that one. Um, Yeah. So, that was this past weekend, and like I said, I know there was a ton of races going on. I don't, I I can't keep up with them all. I need to find a system where we can at least get you results from all of them. But to be honest with you, it it seems like every couple months I hear of a series that I didn't even know existed. So, um, I'd like to spotlight that more and highlight those series more. I just got to figure them out because not even all of them are AMA sanctioned. Like you can find AMA sanctioned races and when they're going on and most of the time you can find results for them. But then there's a lot that aren't even AMA sanctioned and I don't know where that that information's not in a centralized location. And um, maybe by the end goal, maybe moving into next year, that'll be our plan is to get everything in a centralized location. At least so you can look at it from all the different happenings and races um, throughout the country. And I say that, I'm just thinking about East Coast right now. There's a whole nother world in West Coast. I don't know anything about West Coast dirt bike riding. So uh, I need that's one thing that I've been wanting to get into as well. I need to learn that. Maybe we need an OTP Left Coast representative. That would be cool. We get a lot of downloads in California. So I think I think the Left Coast folks are, are trying to stay in touch with what's going on on the East Coast. Now, we've got to brainstorm and find a way to to let the the East Coast guys know what's going on out there on the left coast. Nevertheless, we'll jot that one down and and move to it in the future. This weekend, we have the GNCC. They're calling it the Burr Oak. It's at the John Penton uh, grounds. John Penton facility used to be Sunday Creek Raceway. Now it is Sunday Creek parking lot. They bulldozed that thing, made it flat, made room for more parking, and is the same old Penton track. If you listen to last week's episode, then you know how big of a fan I am. Might be my favorite stop on the circuit. Um, on opposite day, I would certainly say that that is my favorite track on the circuit. Um, but anyway, that is the race that's going on this weekend, and it's no fault of of any type of track situation there. It's just I don't agree with Ohio dirt. So I guess it's more of a, an Ohio thing. 
And I know Big Rig Craig, Craig Oberholzer is listening to this right now. He is Ohio tried and true. I can't stand it. I don't ever want to ride a dirt bike in Ohio again for as long as I live. So if you're listening to me in Ohio, meet me at the West Virginia line. We'll go riding over there. But, uh, yeah, I just had bad luck at the Penton. And one corner's slippery, one corner's tacky, both corners look the same. It's the craziest thing ever. It's the stickiest yet slickest mud that you'll ever ride and it, none of it makes sense even me saying that both of those things i just said don't make any sense until you go race at john penton gngc and you're like ah i see what he was talking about anyway there's a championship a brewing there's four championships well let's be honest there's three championships brewing one championship has been a runaway and that is the xc3 perspective champion jonathan johnson we had him on at the beginning of the year he's been racing xc2 Coming into this year, he even said that the only ride he could get was for XC3. He has absolutely made the most of it. He has dominated that class. He has won every single race except for two. And he actually can wrap it up this weekend. Uh, There was a lot of math to do on that one because XC3 gets two drops. But I'm pretty sure that Jonathan Johnson can wrap up that XC3 title two rounds early. Yeah. Because there's three rounds left. So it'd be two rounds early. Pretty sure Jonathan Johnson can wrap up that XC3 title this weekend. All of the other titles are not going to be wrapped up. Because they are coming down to the wire. Minus that XC2 one. The XC2 one, if my math is right, there is a way that that one can be wrapped up this weekend. But we'll get to that in a second. The main focus is that XC1 battle. This will be the first time in eight years that someone... Not named Caleb Russell will be your GNCC overall slash XC1 champion. And I don't think we're going to find out until the very last seconds at Ironman uh, who's going to be leaving as the new king of the GNCCs. Going into this weekend, it is Stu Baylor that is in second place. Sorry, I'm trying to find my place in here. Here we are. Ben Kelly. Factory Red Bull KTM. He is your current points leader with 237 points in that second place position is Ampro Yamaha's Stu Baylor. So Stu Baylor has 233. So your points are being separated by four going into this weekend. So if Stu gets the win again this weekend, he will take over the points lead regardless of where Ben Kelly finishes. First place is worth 30 points. Second place is worth 25 points. Right now, Stu is down four. If he wins the race, he will take the points lead by one. Um, if neither one of them win the race, then it is likely that Ben Kelly will hold on to the points lead unless something crazy happens with either one of those riders. But if Ben wins, then he'll be ahead by nine. If I'm doing the math right, if Stu gets second, if Stu gets worse than second, then Ben will kind of pull that points gap out, and then he'll be able to cruise and kind of manage those last two races to figure out where he needs to be. But neither one of these riders are going to be managing a damn thing this weekend. They are both going to be going for it, if I had to guess. So that is the way it shakes up. They are four points separated going into this weekend. Ben Kelly currently leading 237 points, Stu Baylor 233 points. That is going to be a battle to watch. The XC2 class. I hate... Okay, so on broadcast and at the track, it's always called the XC2 and the XC1. It drives me nuts. It's the XC2 class and it's the XC1 class. I don't know what the XC1 is, but anyway, sorry, tangent. The XC2 class currently being led by Johnny Gerard. Johnny Gerard has 262 points. Craig DeLong, your reigning and defending XC2 champ with that number one on his bike. He's got 223 points. So I was doing the math, and now that I think about it, I only did the math for these two, but I think uh, it's only coming down to these two. I think third place is pretty well out of it by this point. But um, going into this round, if Jonathan Gerard wins the race and Craig DeLong gets 12th or worse... Johnny can wrap up the title this weekend. Do I think Craig DeLong will get 12th or worse? Absolutely not. I I don't think Craig will get less than 3rd. I think Craig might come out there and win. Um, But just looking at the math, crunching the numbers, 
if Craig DeLong runs into bike problems, that's the only way that he would get 12th or worse. Um, but if he does finish 12th or worse and Johnny wins, then Johnny can clinch the championship this weekend. Um, Johnny was very close to grabbing that championship last year, ended up getting hurt, missed the last race. Um, but Craig DeLong, very hard earned, very well deserved. He's been a, a contender in that XC2 class for a while. He finally went out there, got himself an XC title last year. He's been running the number one all of this year. He is still very much in this. There is no telling what can happen or, um, or any of that. I mean, look at last week. We had two gas gas riders out with COVID COVID can play spoiler to any single one of these things. Any single one of these riders can get COVID. Ben can get COVID. Stu can get COVID. Ben and Stu could get COVID. What if Ben and Stu both get COVID and Jordan Ashburn wins the championship? There's no telling what can happen because COVID is here. And regardless of how it affects people, if you have COVID, you can't come race. And if someone does get COVID and they do come race, that is highly irresponsible. And the safety guy part of me would be very angry at that. (laughs) And, uh, yeah. Anyway, but... that could happen in any single one of these classes. There's three rounds left. I only know of two riders that have had it, and that's because they both announced it last weekend. I don't know who had it in the off season. I don't know who had it in the summer. Um, but if if people haven't had it, then it is a very real chance that they could get it. And what if this season came down to that? We see Caleb win eight in a row, and we finally get the title up for grabs, and then COVID takes it away. That would be insane. I don't wish that on anybody. I'm going to find some more to knock on. Hopefully that doesn't happen. But long story short, XC2 could be wrapped up. Highly unlikely it will be wrapped up. WXC, that one is most certainly not going to be wrapped up. That is another one that we will not have any idea who's going to win that WXC title until sometime shortly after 12 o'clock on the Sunday of Iron Man because... These Iron Women are absolutely putting down the hammer. Rachel Archer just moved into the points lead at the last race. She leads Becca Sheets by two, three points. Three points. Rachel Archer, 264 points. Becca Sheets, 261 points. Both of them are on Yamahas. Becca Sheets, a former two-time GNCC champion. She is the reigning defending GNCC champion. I think think she, she won it before. She definitely won it before. She won it on a Yamaha and went to KTM. Went back to Yamaha, won the championship. Pretty sure Beck Sheets is a two-time champ. Anyway, Beck has been leading this whole year until the last round when Rachel Archer took the lead from her. Um, and by that, I mean she's been leading since the second round because I'm pretty sure Rachel won Big Buck. Nevertheless, that is going to be a class that comes down to wins. And when you look at this class right now, it is actually pretty insane because WXC also gets two drops. So as we mentioned, the points, 264, 261, that is including every single race. That is not including or factoring in any drops. If you look at their results, they both have five wins, each one of them, five wins. Rachel Archer has won five races. Becca Sheets has won five races. If you look right now, their current standings, if you drop their two lowest scores or their two worst finishes, Rachel has a fourth Maybe it's a ninth. I can't read my handwriting. Rachel Leeser has a fourth and a third or a ninth and a third. I'm pretty sure it's a fourth and a third. Becca Sheets has a fourth and a fourth. If you take those out, all of their finishes are ones and twos. They each have five wins, and they all have second place finishes when you take the um, the drops out. So there's been 11 races. That means they each have five wins and six. There's been 10 races. Right? Because there's 13. We're going into this one. There's three left. There's been 10 races. So they each have five wins and five second place finishes. They are as tied as tied can get. So right now you see that Rachel's winning by three points. But when you take out the drops, they are absolutely tied. They are deadlocked. They are stalemated. And that will come down to the wire. Becca Sheets has said that this is going to be her last year racing GNCC. She is stepping away fading into oblivion after this hopefully she doesn't fade into oblivion but she has said that she will not be racing wxc next year that has to add extra motivation that has to add a ton of motivation 
for her to become what I believe is a third, three-time champion. She had to have won it before. I'm, I'm certain she's won it before. Um, but anyway, no doubt that she wants to go out on top. No doubt that she wants to take that number one that's on her bike now and make sure no way's running that number one next year because she won't be there. Rachel Archer is halfway across the world right now. With COVID, she can't even see her family. Her family can't even come here because New Zealand's locked down. She's sacrificing everything to be over here for this. And she's young, she's hungry, and she's right there in contention with this title. And you know that adds a ton of motivation. So both of these girls are very fast, and both of these girls have very big reasons to go win this championship. And... It's been close all year. It has been close, except for this last race when Rachel comes out of nowhere and wins by five minutes. I think it was five minutes and three seconds. This battle has come down to the wire, and then all of a sudden she pulls out a win by five minutes. And talking about motivation, is Becca Sheets going into this like, holy crap, I just got beat by five minutes? Or is she going into this like, yeah, that's never happening again. I'm going to beat her by five minutes this weekend. That's a battle that I am very interested in watching. And it's a very, it's a battle that you should also be very interested in watching. But, um, yeah, so that's, that's the way your pro glass shaking down. That's your preview for this weekend. Um, real quick, going back to everything I was saying earlier about the support, the appreciation that I have for each and every single one of you, everyone listening to this right now, if you could go ahead and hit the subscribe button, whatever you're listening to it on, whether it's Apple pod podcast, um, Stitcher, Spotify, whatever you're on. If you follow us or hit subscribe or whatever you can, um, that'll give you the new episodes as they come out. So if I get weird and soft release an episode like I did the one two weeks ago, you'll see it before everybody else. Um, so if you could go ahead and hit that, give me a rating if you want. I don't know how them ratings work. Someone, I think I know who it was, but someone gave me like a one star rating. Um, I don't think it had anything to do with the show. I think it had to do with a lot of different flavors with salty being the first one, but, um, yeah, if you want to give me a rating, but above all else, be a friend, tell a friend. If you like this show, let somebody know. Let them know, hey, man, have you ever listened to OTP? He was talking junk. He was talking about how fast the girls are. He was talking about Tebow being back. Uh, he was sitting at Josh Toe's kitchen table talking to him about injuries. Um, yeah, if you could, just pass it along. Let somebody else know. A lot of people probably don't even know this exists, and... I mean, that's completely understandable, but let them know. If you enjoy the show, if you enjoy listening to it, I appreciate you. And if you could, let somebody else know. But with that being said, I'm just going to throw this out there. I'm not going to put this anywhere else, but right now, 43 minutes into this show, if you are listening to my voice, I'm trying to think. I didn't have this planned. We're going to do a giveaway. I'm going to do a giveaway. I'm going to give you a set of Kenda tires. Front and rear Kenda tires. Um, tires are not cheap in today's day and age. What we're going to do is if you post a story and let's do hashtag listen to OTP. Is that cool? Let's do that. Listen to OTP and that's T-O. So listen to OTP. Uh, we're going to do a giveaway. So we're going to take all these next week. I'm going to do a drawing on air. And we're going to give away a set of Ken of Tires. So go to your stories. Post a, sh- a screenshot of this. A screenshot or a picture of where you're watching it at. Like if you're listening to it at work. Take a picture of what you're doing. And uh, just you can write whatever you want in it. But make sure in there it says hashtag listen to OTP and we're going to take all those. I'm going to put them in a little pile and I'm going to do a random giveaway next Tuesday on the show. Someone's going to get a set of Kenda tires front and rear. Uh, I will admit you're limited on sizes to what I have in my spare bedroom. Um, I think I have some 18 100s. I I think I have some 18 110s and I know I have some 19 120s. So if you got a 450, that's going to be your choice right there. And then I got some Washougal three fronts. But, um, yeah, hashtag listen to OTP. And uh, you will automatically be entered into a drawing for a set of free Kenda tires. Uh, if you want to sell them, sell them. If you want to run them, run them. 
if I don't have your size, I'll give you a size. You can go try to trade them to the kind of guy at the racetrack. Whatever you want to do with them. Once you have them, they're yours. But, uh, yeah, wherever you're listening to this at, snap a picture of you. Uh, or, like I said, screenshot whatever app you're listening to it on. Um, make sure you're following on the Pipe Podcast on Instagram. Make sure you're subscribed to us on whatever you're listening to it on. And then post that. Hashtag listen to OTP. Uh, the first person that posts this, and they'll come in my in my inbox um, at the time that you post it. So the first person that posts it from right now, you'll get a free OTP t-shirt. I got black, I got red, um, limited on red sizes, but if you wear a size that I have in red, you can get a red shirt if you want. But yeah, first person that posts it, free t-shirt, and then automatically everyone that posts it, you're entered into a drawing that will go on throughout the rest of the week to win yourself a set of Kenda tires. Um, if you want to put that in your post too, you can. I want some Kenda tires, so you better hashtag listen to OTP. Whatever you want to do, um, we're going to get that out there, mainly because a lot of things got put in perspective for me. The way that everyone reached out to me and the amount of support that I got from doing this thing and the amount of people that have reached out and like happy that we're, we're back doing them and now we got OTP to listen to again. Um it's really got me thinking it's really got the gears turning and like i said i hope that i can share some of the stories with you that i heard throughout that thing because uh they were very powerful and impactful which i would not have ever thought that me talking to myself on this microphone in this podcast would ever be able to be described with either one of those two words and so that's why i really put it in perspective for me um so one of the, one of the things that i want to do is I want to get all the equipment that I need. I want to get good microphones. I want to get video equipment and then build a little studio here and do these things video as well. So that way we can go live on YouTube. We can post clips out. Um, when I have riders, the interviews on Tuesdays, instead of doing a phone call, I want to do that FaceTime. Um, it's 2021. Everyone, All podcasts are our video format. This one's kind of been in the roots of audio only, but I really want to take strides to improve this program. And I think with the feedback that I got and all the messages I got and all the support that I got and continue to get, I'm really thinking about investing in myself. And by that, I mean, one, getting the technology up to par, but I want to see how big of a reach that we have and that's why i want to do this hashtag and want to do this giveaway because i just want to see who's listening and and who's willing to listen and who's willing to get engaged with it because um ideally it'd be awesome to be able to have more time i.e not at a full-time job all day on tuesdays to where i can have more more time to do this show and do it properly and um, be more consistent and get these out at a, at a good time and do video and, like I said, do FaceTime interviews and really just bump the whole quality of the show up. And so that's why I want to throw this out there, do this giveaway, give away a set of tires, give away a T-shirt, and um, see what buzz that we can stir up and see if, uh, if maybe eventually this thing can turn into enough support to be able to, uh, like I said, in, invest in myself, invest in this show, and uh, grow it and make it big and make it what it could be and what it should be and make it your number one source for off-road news and information um yeah be a friend tell a friend thank you for listening hashtag listen to otp and uh we'll see you in a week